The concept of minimum flow control is shown in the following example. Let's assume that this pump has a capacity of 200 cubic meters per hour. The vendor specified that the minimum flow rate of the pump is 100 cubic meters per hour. We can provide a recirculation line from the outlet of the pump back into the inlet line. If the flow rate into the pump is 165 cubic meters per hour, the pump is happy since its actual flow is higher than the minimum flow. In this case, the sensor on the pump outlet sends a signal to the control valve on the recirculation line and it remains closed. However, if the flow drops below 100 cubic meters per hour, let's say for example 80 cubic meters per hour, then the flow sensor on the outlet will send a signal to the controller to say, hey, I'm short of my minimum required flow by 20 cubic meters per hour and I'm worried about the pump. Please open the valve enough to recirculate 20 cubic meters per hour so we can fool the pump into thinking that the flow is 100 cubic meters per hour and make it happy. So the control valve on the recirculation line would be partially open to provide the required flow of 20 cubic meters per hour. This flow is sent back to the inlet to satisfy the minimum flow condition of 100 cubic meters per hour and thus prevent damage to the pump. This is the concept of minimum flow control. Now it is important to recognize here that this trick only increases the flow rate inside the recirculation loop to a number higher than 100 cubic meters per hour to fool the pump. We are not able to increase the overall flow in the whole upstream and downstream piping system. The flow in those pipes is still 80 cubic meters per hour. The point here is that the sensor should be placed as close as possible to the pump and within the recirculation loop. Now, the question is whether we need a minimum flow control loop for all centrifugal pumps or not. The answer is no. You will not see this type of control on each centrifugal pump at your facility. We don't need minimum flow control loop for all centrifugal pumps. The following examples of pumps may not need a minimum flow control loop. Small pumps of less than 5 horsepower may need it, but since they are not expensive, we don't bother to put an expensive minimum flow control loop on them. Another example is pumps in a circulating closed system. They may not need a minimum flow control loop because the flow in such pumps is fairly constant. However, the following examples of pumps may require minimum flow control. For example, large pumps of 5 horsepower or more and pumps on the mainstream. The rule of thumb for providing minimum flow control is as follows. For pumps with power lower than 5 horsepower, no minimum flow line is required. When the power of the pump is between 5 horsepower and 10 to 20 horsepower, you need a continuous minimum flow line. As depicted in this process arrangement, instead of going to the expense of installing a control valve, we can simply put a restriction orifice on this line. By doing so, we are always recirculating a portion of flow, even in cases where flow to the pump is higher than the minimum flow. When the flow to the pump is higher than the minimum flow, we don't really need recirculation, but because of the installed orifice, we are continuously wasting energy and we know that. But the pump is so small that installing an expensive control loop for it is hard to justify. For pumps with power between 10 to 30 horsepower, you need an on-off minimum flow line. This is a cheaper option than installing a control valve. In this case, the flow control loop will just provide an on-off function. Finally, for pumps with power higher than 35 horsepower, you definitely need a minimum flow line with a control valve. This is the most complicated, most expensive option, but it is the most common method of controlling minimum flow in centrifugal pumps. This type of control can be done with at least two different arrangements with a flow loop as seen here, or with a pressure loop. We have the option of controlling by flow sensor or by pressure sensor. Usually, the flow loop is selected. Now, when there are two or more pumps in parallel, as highlighted here, and only one of them is operating and the rest are spares, a minimum spillback pipe from the common header works well.
The question is, what the minimum flow should be when there are parallel operating pumps. We have three options for providing minimum flow lines for parallel operating pumps. In option one, a shared minimum recirculation pipe is provided for two operating pumps, as highlighted here. In option two, dedicated recirculation pipes are provided at the beginning, but they are merged downstream before getting to the upstream reservoir. In option three, fully dedicated minimum flow pipes are provided for each pump in parallel arrangement, and both pumps are operating. The problem with option one is that the flow from the two pumps compensate for each other, and the sensor cannot tell if one pump is starving or not. The sensor could be telling you that the system is okay, but one of the pumps could actually be in bad shape. Option 3 may be the best system, but it is the most expensive option. For this reason, most companies choose option 2, and it is most likely that this arrangement is implemented at your facility. In all cases, at least two different types of control system can be applied on the minimum flow pipe, as shown in this next figure. In the left-hand schematic, the total flow is used for the purpose of control, while in the right-hand schematic, the minimum flow is used. The issue with the left-hand schematic is that the control system cannot recognize which pump is suffering from the flow lower than the minimum flow. The issue with the right-hand schematic is that the control system cannot provide the flow to satisfy both suffering pumps if both pumps are suffering from flow lower than minimum flow, but with uneven difference to the minimum flow.